Good afternoon, Saints. Welcome to healing class. That is good. Before we start, I want to start in prayer tonight. The father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for what you have done for us over here and how you have kept us and watched over us and kept us in the right mind. And I thank you for letting us come over here safely and I know you will let us go home safely. And I thank you for it. I ask Heavenly Father that you will open the eyes of your saints, the eyes of their understanding, their heart, and that they be able to receive what I'm going to give them tonight. And Lord, I ask that you will guide me by your Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in what I should say. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. We started a new series last week. Yes, we did. Um, Proverbs, the fourth chapter. But we talked about a lot of things last week. We were laying a foundation. Hello, uh, put that on vibrate because we're not going to go through that tonight. It ain't my phone. I'm going to put my phone on vibrate too because <laughs> uh, we have found out that. There's a lot of distractions, you know, and what we want to do, we want to uh, avoid all these distractions. Amen? Because uh, the title of our series is Attend to uh, Pay Attention to My Words. In order for you to pay attention, you want me to put it on vibrate for you, honey? I already did. Your mother's. <laughs> uh, Robin, help her put that on vibrate. Blast me off. I don't see that. You go to settings and uh, all of that. And, you know, uh, when you get a chance here, let's start here tonight. In uh, Psalms 107. Because we talked about that last week. That verse. Go to Psalms 107. We're going to start there. I turned it on by uh, Don't worry about it. As long as it's not raining. Uh, <laughs> Psalm 107, 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and rescued them from all their destruction. God sent his word and delivered them. Amen? Amen yes. He healed them. And this is why we, uh, this uh, series is about attend to my words. It's actually attend to God's words. Amen. Not my words, it's his words. And we uh, didn't go into it last week, but if you go back to the 17th verse, it says, Fools. You know, uh, the old people used to say a fool is somebody that don't know God. And it says here, Fools, because of their rebellious ways and because of their sins, were afflicted. They detested all kinds of food. That means that they couldn't just eat what they wanted to eat. <laughs> you know, that's a bad name when you can't eat food. And they drew near to the gates of death. That's what happens when you can't eat food. God has well, turned, uh, jumped a whole page there. It said, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. 
He sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. God is so good. He's got he's got his word uh, that he sent and healed them, even if you are fool. Now go with me to Proverbs the fourth chapter. And this is where we left off last week. Proverbs 4, 20. It says, My son, attend to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and healing and health to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. That's where our title came from. Pay attention to my words. And he said, open your ears to my sayings. Open your ears to my sayings. Open. You got to open your ears. It says in Matthew 13:23. It's good that you put your eyes on this. Matthew 13. We're going to be in that chapter in a while here, but I just want to pull a verse out of there. Matthew 13:23. This is Jesus talking here. But you know how to see, but to see. And it says in 23, and the one in whom the seed was sowed on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands and gasps it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, some a hundred times as much as was sowed. Some sixty times as much as was so as much, and some thirty. So you got to hear his word and understand. It. And hold on to it. it says, "Do not let it escape from your sight." This we're back in Proverbs the fourth chapter. It said, "Do not let it escape from your sight." Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Better than Keep it in the center of your heart. Amen. Keep it, your eyes on it. Um, the King James says, um, "Do not let, do not let them not depart from your eyes." That's what the King James says. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. That's what the King James says. So you're not supposed to let the word of God depart from your eyes. Watch over. And then um, Ephesians, the first chapter, he said, do not let it depart from your eyes. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians, first chapter. So we're going to put our eyes on this word today. We're not going to try to quote nothing or none of that. It says in Ephesians 1.18, it says, And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core, core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee the confident expectations to which he called you the riches of his glory inheritance in the saints god's people so the word is spiritual amen but he said if you put your if you listen to it uh, bring your phone here honey just bring here real quick I'm in church right now. Huh? 
I'm sorry, I'm in church right now. I have to call you back to church. Oh. Alright. See, that's why I told you to put it on fiber. I did. It says, open your ears. You gotta open your ears to what I'm saying here tonight. Right. And right. you gotta put your eyes on this word. And he says you gotta also keep them in the center of your heart. That's right. Guard them up. You're not talking about your blood from here. No. Go with me to uh, Proverbs the twentieth chapter, real quick. Hold your place there in the fourth. The twentieth chapter of Proverbs has got a verse here because he's talking about your spirit. Right, your spirit. The very core of you, the very center of you, what you are. You are a spirit. That's what your foundation is on. You have a soul. Yeah. And you live in this body. But you, the real you, is the spirit. Yeah. And it says here in um, Proverbs 20, 27, it says the spirit, the conscience of man, is a lamp of the Lord. Searching and examining all the innermost parts of his being. That's what he does. And then if you go to 1 Peter, the first chapter, I mean third chapter, 1 Peter, third chapter, talking about the heart here. We don't want you to have no confusion about what heart we're talking about. It says in 1 Peter 3, 4, But let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart, with the imperishable qualities and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, one that is calm and self-controlled, not over anxious, right. but serene and spiritually mature, which is very precious in the sight of the Lord. He's talking about this inner man That's in you, right. because you are a spirit. Amen. And he's talking about that heart. That's where you got to keep them in the center of your heart, it says in Proverbs 4.21. And then it says, for they are life to those that find them. Life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. Let's put our eyes on that. I mean, I, some of these verses I can quote, but if you put your eyes, see, he's saying that we got to put our eyes on his word and we got to pay attention to what he's saying. Amen. Amen. And we got to be able to hear it. It says uh, in John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life providing eternal life. Amen. Their life. Now here in this uh, Proverbs 4, 22, it says, for those who find them. So you got to you gotta look for them. Right. Now it isn't so hard to understand the word of God. Mm -hmm. There's Nothing hard about it. But we have an enemy. See, we live in a... We were born into this dark, cursed, sinful world where the, day, the devil and all his cohorts are running around. And what they try to do is make it hard for you to see the Word of God. They make it hard for you hearing it. They make it hard for you seeing the Word of God. And uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 tells us this. I'm not just saying something off the top of my head. I have scripture for it. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Amen. 
2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says, Among them, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent them from seeing, see, he stops you from seeing, the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So he, Satan don't want you to put your eyes on this Bible. He don't want you to see it. He don't want you to see it. So you'll be in darkness. Amen? And it says, if you find them, and healing and health to all your flesh. He gives you healing and health to all your flesh. So that means if you need healing, you can get healing. And that means if you don't need healing, you can stay healthy. Amen? Amen. Now, Proverbs 16.24 has a verse here. 16.24. It says, Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet and delightful to the soul, and healing to the body. Amen. So what we want to do here tonight, we want to not um, tell you what you're doing wrong, but tell you what you have to do right in order to be healed. Because he sent his word and healed them. That's what the scripture says. And uh, when you hear something, Your spirit right away picks it up from the Word of God. But your mind may not understand it yet. So what you have to do when you hear the Word of God, you have to meditate on the Word of God until you see it. Until you get it. And when you accept it into your heart, you will see it. Because the spirit is there in it until you. <laughs> but your mind may not have it. That's right. Because the scripture says that you got to renew your mind. See, when you got born again, let's go to 1 Peter, uh, first chapter here. Because when you got born again, your spirit got saved. But your mind didn't. You still had the same sinful thoughts running through your mind, and that's why the scripture says that you need to renew your mind. That's what it says in Romans 12. It says, uh, matter of fact, 12, 2, it says, and you're supposed to, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with the superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. So you have to renew your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and pur pur purpose for you. Now in 1 Peter, the first chapter, We there? First Peter, the first chapter. Go down to the twenty-second verse. It says, "Since by your obedience to the truth you have purified yourself for a sincere love of the believers." See that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly seeking the best for one another. For you have been born again, that is, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose, not of seed, which is imperishable, but from that which is, not of seed which is perishable, but from that which is imperishable and immoral. That is, through the living and everlasting word of God, for 
All flesh is like grass, and all the glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls off. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word, the good news of salvation, which was preached to you. So he's saying that you were born again, not of, uh, the King James puts it, said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, mm -hmm. but of incorruptible, by the word of God. So, you remember when you were born again? That seed God put in you, it created in you a new spirit. It made you a new spiritual being. So you're not who you were before. But your mind and your body, nothing happened. You have to, all the thoughts going through your mind, you have to renew your mind with the Word of God. And your body, all the desires and things that your body had before are still there. My uh, Pastor Joyce is working on that. About the body. Getting the body under control. So what he says, not a corruptible seed. Amen. The seed is the word of God. That's what seed is. Because uh, when you were born again, he put a uh, seed in you to be born again. And what happens, uh, the more you study the word of God, uh, what you did, when he put that seed in you, when you first heard the gospel, I don't know where you heard it from, you could have heard it from the radio, somebody could have told you about it. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you could have heard it in uh, any one of these classes or somebody preaching. But when you heard the word of God, and you really could see and understand what was going on, your heart, you put it in your heart. And it changed. And you had life everlasting. Because <laughs> when you get truly born again, you can't help but tell somebody. But a lot of people you tell, they can't understand what you're talking about. They haven't received. They don't believe. They have heard it over and over again. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, uh, you can hear the gospel preach the good news about Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, and it don't do nothing. We talked about that last week. If you don't mix the word of God with faith, it ain't going to profit you. And love. The love of God. You got to mix it with faith. Mm -hmm. So when you believe what you heard, you were born again. But there are still things going on in you that you got to get straightened out. A lot of Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, not of corruptible seed, mm -hmm. of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, discussing scripture here, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, verse uh, 53, it says, for this perishable part of us must be put on the imperishable nature and this moral part of us that is capable of dying must put on immortality which is freedom from death so when you were born again the only part of you were born again was your spirit and it's going to live forever matter of fact it don't age it just gets more spiritually mature yeah, more mature but what a lot of people like to do when they're born again, they like to freeze whatever that moment is in time. But you can't. Because your body is deteriorating, just like a flower. Everything here on earth has an expiration date. Glory to God. 
But see, we're going to have a new body. We're going to have a new body. Amen? And it says here in 1 Corinthians uh, verse 54, it says, When this perishable puts on the imperishable and this mortal puts on immortality, then the scriptures will be fulfilled that say, Death is swallowed up in victory, vanished forever. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is where is where is the O death, where where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin which by which brings death is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, unmovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed. Being continuously aware that your labors, even to the point of exhaustion right. in the Lord is not futile nor wasted. It will never, it is never without purpose. That's, right. That's what gives us energy. Gives us that extra mm. to keep going. To work, come over here four days a week and teach the word of God. Because we are born again. We're a born again believer. We are a saint. We've been forgiven of all our sins. Yes, indeed. And, and what's happening to us, our body is trying to keep up with the spirit. Mm -hmm. But we found out that our bodies can't keep up with the spirit the way we want it to. That's why he told me to go get something to eat. Right. You better go get something to eat. Right? So he says, <laughs> even <laughs> though our outer man, he says this in... Uh, Second uh, Corinthians, he says, even though our outer man, what chapter? In uh, Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, he talks about the inner man and the outer man. He says in verse 16, he says, Therefore we do not become discouraged, spiritually disappointed, or afraid. Right. None, none of that Though our outer self is progressively wasting away, mm -hmm. yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Getting stronger. For our momentary light distress, this passing trouble is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, a fullness beyond all measure, surpassing all comprehension, a transcendent splendor, and an endless blessedness. For we look not at the things which are seen, That's right. but at the things which are unseen. That's right. For the things which are visible are temporal, just brief and fleeting, but the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. Praise God. He says, not a corruptible seed. We wouldn't born again by a corruptible seed. That's right. But an incorruptible. Mm -hmm. First John, the third chapter. First John. First John. Mm -hmm. Have you just flip over a few pages. The third chapter. The ninth verse says, and no one who is born of God deliberately, knowingly, or habitually practices his sin. Sure don't. <laughs> Amen. Get it, bro. Because God's seed, his principle of life, the essence of his righteous character remains permanently in him who is born again. 
who is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. That's right. And he who is born again cannot habitually live a life characterized by sin because he is born of God and, be, and longs to please him. That's right. What uh, chapter was that? That was uh, first uh, John the third chapter, the ninth verse. We're in the Amplified. Uh, it says, "By the word of God." Now, the word of God, heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus said this, but my words will by no means pass away. Right? We know that this earth is going to pass away. It tells us that in Revelation. It will pass away. Just like you will pass away. Amen? And that's what he's talking about here. The, the, all flesh is like grass. And all the glory like the flower of the grass. This is uh, First Peter, the first chapter. For the grass withers and the flower fails away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Amen? Amen? So once you get that under your belt, that you're born again, then God can put more seed in your heart. Amen? Amen. He can put that seed by his stripes you were healed. He can plant that seed. Amen? Amen. He can also put he became poor that through his poverty you may be rich. He can plant that seed. But that seed has to be watered. Go with me to uh, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. We touched on this a little bit last week, but I didn't get into it. I just was reading a few verses and it says here in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. It says, However, brother and sister, I could not talk to you as to spiritual people, but only as to worldly people, dominated by human nature, mere infants in the new life in Christ. This is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. Mm -hmm. By the Spirit of God. And you know, we as ministers have to recognize our audience. That's right, we do. And, and, and be gentle, though. Be gentle. And he said, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Even now, are you still not ready? So there's a lot of things in the Word of God that we haven't touched on, but we're going to touch on. He says, you are still worldly, controlled by ordinary impulses and sinful capacity, for as long as there is jealousy and strife and discord among you, you are not, are you not unspiritual? Unspiritual? And are you not walking like ordinary man, unchanged by faith? There's a lot of people in the church like that. They're babies. It says, For when one of you say, I am a disciple of Paul, and another, I am a disciple of Apostle, are you not proving yourself unchanged just as ordinary people? You know, a lot of people have their own preacher. They'll say, well, I'm of this camp. Mm -hmm. No, I'm of this camp. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm, I like the way they teach the preach. Some and he's, even go to church and they're not preaching it Sunday. Amen. And then it says, uh, verse 5, What then is apostle and what is Paul? Right. Just servants through whom you believed in Christ, even as the Lord appointed to each his task. Mm -hmm. It says, I planted. Mm -hmm. That's Paul. He said, I planted. Right. Apollos of water. Right. But God, all the while, was causing the growth. The growth, right. 
It's you know, God who causes the growth. Right, he does, he gives a lot. So neither is he the one who plants, nor the one who waters anything, but only God who only. causes the growth. That's right. He who plants and he who waters are one, in importance and esteem, working toward the same purpose. But each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, his servants working together. You are God's cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard, God's building. So we are his building, his vineyard, his garden. The seed is the word of God. So this, these seeds here, he is planting in us because we're his garden. And you know, it, 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 it kind of tickles me because when you look at man, we are a spirit. You are a spirit. Right. You have a mind, which is your soul, emotions and all that. Mm -hmm. And you live in this body. That's right. And God says this body is his garden. Mm -hmm. He wants to plant some seeds in there. Right. Amen. Amen. That's what he's saying in Romans. And what Paul, see, Paul, what he was, he was an apostle. Right. And what apostles do, they uh, plant churches. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't do that. No, they can't. Everybody can't go somewhere where nobody has been and tell them about the Word of God. But you got to be tough to do that. You got to be rugged and tough. Everybody can't do that. Mm -hmm. It says uh, an apostle is a special messenger representative. So what what was Paul planting? The seed was the word of God. He was planting the word of God. Right. Here's what Paul says in First uh, Corinthians the fifteenth chapter. Hold your place there. First uh, Corinthians fifteen. This is one of the first verses that I learned when I started preaching and teaching. Here's Paul is planting the Word of God. He says here in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he says, Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news of salvation which I preached to you which you welcome and accepted, and on which you stand by faith. That's what, he, that's what he was planning. He says, By this faith you are saved, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. Mm -hmm. If you hold firmly the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, just superficial and without complete commitment. He threw that. Well, he didn't put it in there. The Spirit the of God Spirit put it in there. Spirit, <laughs> it says, For I passed on to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins according to that which. The scriptures foretold, and that he was buried, and that he was bodily risen from risen on the third day, according to that which the scripture foretold, and that he appeared to Cephas, Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time the majority of whom are still alive, but some have fell asleep in death. Then he was seen by James, then all the apostles. That's what he was planting. He was planting in these churches that, first of all, you've got to be born again. Right. So Apollos was born after him watering with the word of God. Pagan? Hebrews, the 10th chapter. 
There is a verse or two over there that talks about something that the Lord put my eyes on. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse. It says, Let us approach God with a true and sincere heart and unqualified assurance of faith. Having had our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Wow. Let us seize and hold tightly the confessions of our hope without wavering. For he who promises is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. And let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds, not forsaking our meetings together as believers who worship and instruction as is the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's returning approaching. So he said, this is, this is what Apollos was doing. He was watering them with the word of God. He was going to these scriptures like we do, just like this is healing class. And what we're doing is planting a seed of healing. By his stripes you were healed. Amen? Amen. And he says, if you believe that, mm -hmm. that seed, you needed water. So this is what we're doing. We're watering it because we want you to know it is God's will for you to be healed. Amen. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Right. Whose form is that? I think it's mine. She was supposed to turn it down. No, she didn't do it. Amen. See, uh, that's what I thought was going to happen. So Apollos was watering, but it said God is the one that gave the increase. We can't take no credit for none of this. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. We can't take no credit for nothing. No. It's God. We'll be rewarded for our labors. Right. Now, in Psalm 92, I saw something over here. Psalm 92. Moving right along, I thought I was going to get a lot farther here today, but you know, you have to just take it the way the Lord gives it to you. Take it easy. Psalm 92, verse 13. Um, it says, Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Growing in grace, they will still strive and bear fruit and prosper in old age. They will flourish and be vital and fresh, rich in trust and love and commitment. Mm -hmm. well, they are living morals, mm -hmm. remorals, to declare that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. So there is no darkness in God at all. He no. is all light. He right. is light, and he is life. Don't even need a light when you're around him. That's what that's who God is. And then it says in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 30th verse, It says, but it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus. Is that true? It's from God that we're in Christ Jesus. Right, because he gave us the Jesus. Because God gave us only begotten Son. Right. Right. So he says, but it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus, right. who became to us wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation. That's how we got saved. Right. And righteousness making us acceptable to God 
and sanctification, making us holy and setting us apart for God, and redeeming, providing our ransom for the penalty of sin. So then, as it is written in the scripture, he who boasts and glories, let him boast and glory in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to have to stop right there. But I think this is enough right here to let you know where we're headed. Right. The same way you got born again is the same way that you can get healed. Right. Amen? Amen. It's the same way that you can get prosperous. <clears throat> if you listen to his words and you put it in your heart and you keep it there. And obey his word. It will be health. Right. And heal into all your flesh. And that's how you get the mind under control. When you start obeying his word. You got to renew your mind. You have to. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.